He is a God who does everything according to His own will in the heavens and the earth and under the earth. He is Lord. There will never be a changing of the guard. There will never be a new administration or a new political administration to move in and take His place. He will never be voted out of office. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the Lord of all things. Now think about that for a moment. Even over the ungodly, He is Lord. He is Lord over them and He is the possessor of them by right of creation. He has created all things and all things belong to Him. So if you're here tonight and you hate God, and if you refuse to obey His will, know this, He is still your Lord. Oftentimes I hear preachers telling people, you need to make Jesus Lord of your life. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, you don't have to do that because He is already Lord of your life. God made this Jesus whom men crucified to be both Lord and Christ. So you do not have to make Him Lord. You just have to decide how you're going to respond to His Lordship. What are you going to do about this truth? How are you going to live in light of the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord? Fight against Him if you want. But nothing will change. If all the nations were to come together as one great and mighty force and they were to attack the throne of God, it would, they would have the power of a tiny insect beating its head against a mountain of granite. So He's Lord. But over you, His people, He is Lord not only by right of creation, but by right of redemption. If God had never sent His Son to die for you, you are still commanded to worship Him because He's worthy. But God has sent His Son to die for you. And some of you are redeemed by His blood. This Lord that is seated upon the throne became a man and died on Calvary to buy you, to redeem you. So how much greater should His Lordship be over you who call yourself Christians? He should be your absolute Lord. Not a relationship of terror, not a legalism, but the fact that this Lord died on a cross for you, that love ought to control you. How many times did the Apostle Paul say that he was a prisoner of Jesus Christ? Was he talking merely about the chains that the Romans put on his arms and legs? No. He was a prisoner to the love of this Lord who is seated upon the I throne. Was... Because of what this Lord had done for him, he said, I must. The love of Christ compels me. I remember a young man many years ago who was studying to be a lawyer. He was the most self-centered person you've ever met. But one day someone shared the gospel with him and it grabbed him. It took control of him. And the next day, he was out in the streets preaching as though no one had ever heard the message before. Hey, everybody, listen to me. Jesus died. His friends grabbed him. They thought he'd lost his mind. And they took him aside. They took him away. And they sat down with him. And they said, what are you doing? You're losing your mind. Everyone thinks you're crazy. You're out in the middle of the university crying out, Jesus died for our sins. You, Believe. Be saved. You, you, and I'll never forget the answer that that young man gave. He said, but he died for me. And the other, his friend said, well, we know that. Everybody knows Jesus died for them. And he said, no, you don't understand. Jesus died for me. You're saying the same words, but you're not hearing me. Jesus died for me. The Lord of glory died for this sinner. What else can I do now? I have to follow Him. I have to preach. Do you see? It's the love of this Lord that ought to drive you see? to be holy. Many people live their Christian life this way. What do I have to do? What are the rules that I have to follow? And then what can I get away with? Where are the loopholes? That is pathetic. Christianity is not about keeping the rules. It is about living your life for the one who died for you. If he tells you to go into a foreign country and die as a martyr, you should do it. If he tells you to sell everything and give it to the poor, you should do it. If he tells you to stand on your head in the middle of the street and cry out, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound, you should do it until a bus runs over you. He is Lord. 
But we do not follow Him merely because of His power. We follow Him because of what He has done. And we follow Him because of who He is. 